Have you ever dealt with a stubborn rash that just won't go away? Itchy, red, flaky skin that keeps coming back no matter what you do. Maybe you've tried antifungal creams, changed your soaps, or even taken prescription meds, but it still comes back. If that sounds familiar, you might be dealing with a fungal skin infection. But here's the thing. The real problem might not just be on your skin. It could be coming from inside your body. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Zizian, a board-certified general surgeon and IFM-certified functional medicine physician. On this channel, I discuss functional medicine, surgery, skin health, food and supplements, and the latest medical research. And if that sounds good, please like, share with your friends, and subscribe. So why do fungal infections happen? Fungi like dermatophytes, candida, and malassezia, to name the most common ones, are all around us. They actually live on our skin all the time, usually without causing any problems. But when the environment changes, maybe you're sweating more, or your immune system is weakened from a latest cold, or your skin barrier is compromised, that's when these fungi actually take over. Certain things can trigger fungal overgrowth, and those are antibiotics, which wipe our protective bacteria. Steroid medications can do that. And the big one is excess sugar in your diet, or even just living in a hot, humid climate. Now, where do these infections usually show up? Well, fungi love warm, moist areas. That's why athlete's foot is so common in people who wear tight shoes or go to the gym a lot. Jock itch is another one, affecting the groin area in people who sweat a lot or wear tight clothing. Fungal nail infections happen when fungi get trapped under the nails, making them thick, yellow, and brittle. And some scalp infections actually can lead to hair loss. And then there's also seborrheic dermatitis, which is linked to a type of yeast that naturally lives on our skin. It's called malassezia. And this is what causes dandruff and those flaky patches on face and sometimes chest. So now, who is at most risk? Well, let's look at this in more detail. If you have a weakened immune system, whether from diabetes, autoimmune disease, chronic stress, or even just poor gut health, you're more likely to get a fungal infection. People who sweat a lot, like athletes and gym goers, are at risk, of course. And if you've taken a lot of antibiotics or steroids, you could be more prone to fungal overgrowth. If your diet is high in sugar and refined carbs, you might be actually feeding the fungus inside your body. So what do we do in conventional medicine? So what we do in conventional medicine, we prescribe topical antifungal creams, and um, they usually help in many cases. Sometimes patients ask for oral medications, and there is a role for oral antifungals. However, we usually avoid them as they may cause liver issues, especially in the elderly patients. Often the problem with these infections is that they are recurrent. They come and go. And that brings us to functional medicine perspective, because fungal infections aren't just about what's happening on the skin. If you are someone who keeps getting them again and again, the real issue could be gut yeast overgrowth, just, for example, like candida overgrowth. This is when yeast inside of your digestive system starts multiplying, disrupting your gut microbiome and even affecting your skin. When this happens, you might not just have skin infections. You could also deal with bloating, sugar cravings, brain fog, and fatigue, and many other symptoms. So what can you do? First, you need to balance the gut. That means cutting down on sugar and processed carbs, because again, yeast thrives on sugar, adding in probiotic-rich foods, and restoring healthy bacteria. Uh, taking yeast balancing or yeast fighting supplements helps as well. But it's not just about the gut. You also need to strengthen your skin barrier as well. That means keeping your skin dry, use, using the right uh, topical antifungal treatment, and avoiding irritating soaps or lotions. And finally, don't forget about your immune system. Getting enough sleep, managing stress, and supporting your body with nutrients like vitamin D and zinc can make all the difference. At the end of the day, Fungal infections aren't just skin deep. If you're struggling with them repeatedly, it is a sign that something deeper is going on. Have you ever noticed a connection 
between your diet and your skin? I'm curious to find out. Or do your skin issues flare up after taking antibiotics or eating too much sugar? If so, please share your thoughts in the comments. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.